there, everyone. David here from Collect All Monsters. I'm here in my collectible room with my buddy Steve from Brooklyn, New York. Um, this is his first trip to the Northwest. And um, I just wanted to ask him a few questions about his kaiju toy collecting journey. So how's it going, Steve? It's going awesome. Thank you for having me. First stop straight from the airplane, meeting you for the first time in person. That's awesome. Um, yeah, my name's Steve Holler. I've got a silly nickname, Coach Fury. Friends call me Fury. You can call me Fury. That's the Fury and Fury Industries. <laughs> and I'm coming out to teach uh, a fitness course certification tomorrow. And of course, I reached out to David. I'm like, hey, man. I'm coming into town, can we meet up? Because David's been on my podcast, the Coach Fury podcast. We actually, Dave, the, the way we actually got to know each other is you gave me and Kyle and Dell a ton of advice when I was going to Tokyo for the first time on where to check out. That's actually the first time we started uh, more than commenting on each other's collection pictures. That's right, and we have a lot in, in common because we both lived in, in the New York area and we frequented the same places to go get these awesome toys back, yeah, we, back in the day. We definitely have been in the same store without knowing it at some point in the 90s. I bet sure. you I bet you it was Zaka too. I guarantee it was Zaka because I was in there all the time. <laughs> Especially when it was on Broom Street. But anyway, I just want to quickly ask you a couple of questions about your collecting journey. So let's start off with, with uh, your very first collectible toy that got you into um, collecting these these awesome toys? The Godzillas in particular. So we were talking earlier, uh, my favorite toy of all time is G.I. Joe in terms of like, talk about like uh, articulation and going big. I mean, they made an aircraft carrier. Like I just love G.I. Joe. Uh, and I always love Godzilla, but I, I this is gonna be like sacrilege. I never really loved the Bandai figures because they weren't detailed enough or they didn't move enough. Like that part for me was ingrained from like, Star Wars having vehicles and stuff, uh, and then G.I. Joe knocked it out of the park. But then years later of collecting different things, uh, I somehow randomly came across the baby Godzilla figure from uh, right. Monster Arts. Oh, wow. The, okay, the cool. The Monster Arts one. And I had been re-watching the movies. I'd always kept in touch with the movies. And uh, my, my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, was like, oh, that guy's adorable. So I bought her that as a gift. Little did I know, uh, I guess that was like 2013, 2014, that that would open the floodgates um, very quickly of me tracking down every previously released Monster Arts thing. And then through that and finding out like the Godzilla Collectors group on Facebook and, and starting to find stuff, I was exposed to x -Plus and Marmot and M1. And one of the things that I hated about those Monster Arts figures was like, you get them out of the box, pieces fall out. You totally. Them, especially like the, the Bachelor one is the worst of all of them. Um, and then I also didn't love the scale. Like it was great in a small collection, but as the collection got bigger, I like to be able to like have something formidable to look at. Um, so then I got into X plus through that and pretty much started selling off my monster arts to fuel the X plus, uh, habit. I decided pretty much my collections focused on the 30 centimeter line, unless I think, think a figure won't come out. Um, in that line, like the Mothra 64, uh, did I get the year right on that? Yeah, you're did. perfect. Yeah, that's the 64. Coming off the train. Yeah, it's okay. Um, <laughs> and then I think, uh, I know the early figures, I got a Varen from Flossies. Dell, I think, sold me a used GMK that was like recently hard to find. And just started sort of building from there. Um, a Muck Time Toys is not far from my folks' house. Uh, I used to work at a comic book shop. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I picked up a few figures there and then started getting some stuff from Flossies and just started going down the rabbit hole. And about a year after I started collecting, a year and a half after I started collecting pretty hardcore again, um, I started getting opportunities to teach in Japan. Uh, hence again, our conversation. So that's then right. I started being able to go around and uh, you know check out all the Mandarakes and just go toy hunting. Uh, stayed in the Godzilla hotel. Oh, pretty, see, see, you've I've never even done that. I That's pretty awesome. I didn't get to stay in the actual room, but I had the viewing room where you look out the window and he's right there. I think I'd like that better actually because you get to see him. And I did um, have a, a Suntory whiskey underneath the Godzilla head outside on the patio <laughs> in um, in November. It was just Keith, Kyle, and I. There was no one else out there, so that was pretty special. And I did get to do that, which um, I guess uh, is almost as good as staying in the room. But next time or, or sometime in the near future, I'd love to just do it for a night because that's, that's pretty iconic. Yeah, that's so. pretty much I did it for my last night on my first Tokyo work trip out there. I was like, you know what? I'm going to 
book myself out of this other hotel, I have to stay here one night. I think it was the first year they were open, so I think it was a little easier to get into it too. I think it might be a little trickier now. Uh, oddly enough, the only place in Japan that I was asked to put on long sleeves to hide my tattoos was by a security oh, guard. Oh, really? At, yeah, the hotel for sure. Oh, wow. You know, luckily for me and Keith and Kyle, we all have tattoos. We went in the winter and we had long sleeve shirts on. So it was pretty, pretty safe because that is definitely a concern. And um, I don't want to get off base too much, but we were in uh, Hokkaido last February for the Sapporo Snow Festival. And the three of us wanted to go to a tr traditional onsen. And Kyle actually found one about an hour outside of Sapporo in the mountains that, that were, uh, it was acceptable to have tattoos. And it was just a magical experience to be able to do that with Japanese people. Yeah. And um, But anyway, we're going off track here. So it's great that you were in Japan. I, I recommend that everybody who's a collector try to make a trip out there at some point in their lives just, just to see. This is going to sound counterintuitive to the uh -oh. collectors out here, right? Pass on two Gigantics. There you go. And you have your trip you have to your Tokyo trip. if you've you never do. been there. You absolutely do. It's literally flights from New York are around, I'd say, like, what? Between, like, $1,100 and $1,500. And it's you, cheaper from the West Coast. Well, once you, oh, yeah, it's, and it's a little, it's shorter as well. It's very it? short. Yeah, it's it's about 11 hours from the West Coast. Yeah, it's about 14 to 15 yeah. from uh, New York. And, you know, you can get really nice Airbnbs for, like, the equivalent of, like, 100 bucks a night. So you could literally go there and check it out, even if you don't come home with anything, just to see there. Because it, it was very cool. And the more I go, I, I, I've been lucky enough to go five years in a row now. I come home with less Godzilla stuff every time. But, but great memories. Great memories. And great you start memories. to get the culture more. And it's, yeah. it's really cool when I teach now, um, since I've been out there not like... People know that like, I'm a legit fan of their culture, not just like some guy from the U.S. that's nerdy about Godzilla. Uh, so it's like they got a kick. Like at the last course I taught, somebody, this guy, um, Taizo, gave me um, a gashapon of Shin Godzilla. He's like, my son got this for you. And he handed it to me at the cert because this guy's gone through four years of courses with me. Oh my God, and, that's uh, amazing. Yeah, so that's on my desk at work now at the studio. That's absolutely amazing. And you know, you, you just hit the nail on the head. If, if you show interest and you're enthusiastic and polite, you know, they will bend over backwards to help you find anything you're looking for and maybe something that you don't even know you're looking for. Yeah. So my collecting journey um, is definitely shifted to things that I personally pick up um, in Japan or friends bring me back from Japan. I find that to be a lot more special than ordering something online, which I still do, of course, but um, I fully agree with that. Actually. Those pieces to me mean so much and to actually be able to go to a shop and hand pick up a toy that, that, that you think is cool or have someone give you one in Japan as a gift. That's just super special. And that I think that's what um, those pieces hold a very special place in my collection. And you actually got me a piece from Kaiju Sakaba, and I'm still very grateful for that. Um, Happy to help. And um, yeah, so why don't you just um, say a few more words about your collecting journey and then we'll, we'll you know, we'll end it. And um, that's, that's going to that's gonna be the end of our interview. Cool. Well, it's been great to marvel here. We were talking, um, I, I just opened up my, my, my gym, my, my studio six months ago, and in the transition of going into knowing that that was, or a version of that was about to happen, I had actually had to cut my collection way back. So coming in and seeing David's collection, I've got to see a lot of the pieces from X Plus that I was not able to buy at the time. But what's been fun now is now that we have the studio, if you come in, you'll see some Godzilla toys, you'll see some X Plus stuff, but you'll also see some Star Wars stuff. I started rounding out some of my Buffy figure collection. So I've been able to like kind of like, enjoy uh opening up the things that i collect because the studio is a community space it's not just about me so uh yeah we have like star wars helmets now from the the new hasbro line the black series that they put out and i get to teach in those so it's uh i'm looking forward to seeing there's some pieces i'm seeing in here now that i'm gonna go and try that's to hunt that i've missed that's awesome so do you have any advice for collectors that are in the the um, new york area that would help them maybe find some stuff these days I mean, the search, it's not that different, I think, than when you were there, unfortunately. There's just less options. Um, I think Toy Tokyo, probably still low pricey, um, has the most variety of non-X Plus stuff. Um, you know, Midtown Comics, I, I just actually, you know, they always have some Godzilla. They always have the Bandai Tamashii Nation stuff. But I also just saw they had two X Plus or three X Plus figures up on a shelf that I didn't notice were there. 
Um, I'll be honest, like the greatest thing if you're a collector is, is reach out, join the Godzilla collectors group or the X plus Kaiju collectors group, because that's where you're going to make like actual friend connections that are going to guide you into something. Uh, and then have moments like this, you know, getting to hang out with David or buddies that have shown me help guide me around without even being there or where to go in Tokyo. I got to meet, we were talking about uh, Ron Nix, who's like a long running man. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> in Okinawa, that's something that I'll definitely do at some point in my life. Um, see Okinawa and then of course see Ron's amazing collection. Yeah. yeah. And so like that, so it's a more direct human connection, not just about the item. Cause kind of like what, what David said about where you pick up stuff, like some of my greatest pieces now, they're not even what I would consider a line, but now I have some of those Bandai figures that I don't necessarily like, I've grown appreciation for them. But now there's ones that like, oh, I got those every time I went to the Godzilla store or someplace in Tokyo. Um, I got the purple Taiwan shin that I went to teach in Taiwan for the first time. And See, then, that's special. That's yeah, exactly what I'm but, talking but about. It was a gift. Like the people were like, what would you like to do while you're out here? And I'm the nerd who's like, go to a guy at any Godzilla stores, any collectible <laughs> stores. And they were like, Oh, we don't really have anything like that, but I did find out that Toys R Us still exists, although they're now make, officially making a U.S. comeback as well. But Toys R Us never went, went away to Taiwan, so I went there. They didn't have anything, but when I came back, as I was about to leave, they had hunted out through eBay or something, the purple Taiwan limited edition shin. So that's one that's of the treasures. That's so cool. Yeah, of course. So it's that, but it's also sometimes like there's figures in my collection from um, like, you know, Dell. I'm pretty sure it was Dell with the GMK. Um, they're like, part of me wouldn't want to sell that figure even if I decided to let it go because it's like, ah, oh, you know, like Dell and I don't know each other in person. But he's like, an awesome guy and he's yeah. been sitting right where you're sitting. And he's helped me out on a yep. bunch of stuff like yep. you have. Absolutely. But I also know, oddly, and I don't want to get morose about it, like um, there was a gentleman, William, who passed away a couple of years ago. Oh, yes, indeed. I have, yeah. his, I have his Godzilla 75, like oh, his man. Mega Godzilla 75. Wow, like, not, which you'll never I'm you'll not going to sell it. No. Like, mm -mm. Um, so there's that connection from it, you know, and then there's some, you know, you helped actually guide me to my Nakajima, my green Nakajima. From that's Hanukaki. right. That's right. That's right. The first one of that figure I got, I got my first time out at Econo Broadway, although I actually got that one at um, Akihabara. Yeah. But like, so yep. like you're trying to build those memories and it's the group. Oddly enough, this isn't a commercial for the group, but like I'm a, I'm pretty like antisocial in a lot of ways. Uh, the group opens that up and also educates us on like, are we getting robbed on eBay? Are we getting ripped off at totally. this store or that store? 100%. And, and you know, I'm, I'm going to end it with this this uh, this thought. You know, it's so great that, you know, we can be friends and hang out and talk online with people who get it, like who understand why we like these things and why we spend so much of our hard-earned money on these things and just understand, you know, our passion for them and... Um, Oh, real quick, what's your favorite Godzilla movie? Oh, Son of Godzilla, easily. easily Great answer. Very good. Very good. Yeah. And what was your first Godzilla movie you've ever seen? I think I saw 54 was the first one. Ooh, what a way to start. I, That's I awesome. I think so. I think 84, 85 was the first one I might have seen in a theater, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's those marathons. Like, you right. and all the fellow right. Northeast folks Got it. win the marathons. I'm pretty yep. sure it's that, or it might have been even Son of Godzilla. Well, anyway, um, we're going to end this right now. Thank you so much for, for chatting with me for a brief time about your collecting journey. And um, be sure to watch us on Collect All Monsters. I'm pretty sure what I'll do is I'm going to post this right to the page so anybody can look at it at any time um, because it really exceeded our five-minute limit, for, <laughs> for um, which I knew it would, for videos we're going to play on the live stream. But it's great to do these little um, interviews with people who come – and visit me and um i hope we hope to do many more of these so again steve thank you so much and anybody coming into brooklyn new york hit me up on the facebook come and come and say hi and you can check out my collection it is not anywhere near as impressive as this um but you can also get a training session on <laughs> at the speakeasy there you go there. there you go so anyway thanks again and uh hopefully we will do this again at some point awesome thanks for having me okay bye bye <laughs>